Thank you for joining me. I'm Sarah and I'm a cartoonist, a writer and an illustrator. I have made kids books and I make a lot of comics, uh, particularly comics based on stuff I see and hear around me. I used to make one based on my first journey into work um, and at the moment I make a comic every week um, based on what I see and hear around me when um, I'm going to the supermarket or the park or just out in the local town, you know, walking through the street, that sort of thing, just ordinary everyday life. Even though I use words and images, what I'm going to focus on here, it's, it's not a drawing tutorial, um, I'm going to focus on the actual approach to the storytelling itself, so how you would make the most out of a, an observational outing um, and how you would craft your notes into a story. Whether you're good at drawing or not good at drawing as far as you're concerned, um, I would say have a go at the um, visual note taking. Um, they can be the most simple little scribbly doodles, but so long as they mean something to you, that's the most important thing. Because um, I do think we um, we tap another part of our brain when we think visually as well as in words. Um, and it's a really important part of the brain. It's highly intuitive. Um, you know, you don't have to teach kids how to read images. They instinctively do it. Um, and it, it, it can reveal details to you that your more rational brain might not immediately detect, but also as a memory recall device, it's really, really powerful as well. And um, something that like people use when they're studying and stuff. This tutorial is for anyone who's interested in storytelling. If the end result that you want is a typed up, you know, neatly written story without any images at all, the advice in here, I hope, will still be useful as well. Not fiction in that you're not making anything up. You're you're staying true to reality in that you are looking at what's happening around you. Um, but what you are doing is you're you're choosing what to extract from what it is that you're seeing, um, and that's that's where the storytelling really comes in. You you may see twenty five people in the park, but it's the the two or three people that you choose to focus on. And, and the details about them that you choose to focus on, that's what makes the story. I feel it's a really important muscle to flex because no matter what kind of writing you're interested in, whether it's non-fiction, whether it's creative fiction, sci-fi, fantasy, um, this ability to build worlds, I think it starts with being able to construct the world around you. And even though you're unconsciously absorbing that every day. It's only when you stop and consciously begin to break that down that you're really beginning to build that muscle. So whether the end goal is the observational story itself or a springboard for a longer creative piece of fiction, either way, you're gonna get a lot and you're gonna build a lot of muscle. Writing muscle. Good places for <clears throat> some good places for um, practicing your observational skills. So parks are great if you've got the weather, um, because it's quite a natural thing to sit around in a park. Um, nobody takes any notice of you at all whatsoever. Other places, I really like supermarkets. So I I don't do the observation. You know, I don't like start writing in my notebook right there in the supermarket. Sometimes I might take a quick note on my phone, but um, it can just be the most fleeting of thing in a supermarket um, that catches your attention and can make for a great story, especially if you're in a long queue, just observing the other people in the queue can actually be quite entertaining. When, oh yeah, city streets, town streets, village streets, wherever there's at least one street and an accumulation of some people. Um, that makes for, for good observation as well. Again, kind of on the move. In non-pandemic times, shopping centres are amazing. Um, I personally hate shopping centres. I always found them the most depressing 
places on the face of the planet no matter how fancy they are and how many shops they have and it's not that I loathe shopping or anything like that I just find shopping centres really depressing but I used to live right beside a shopping centre for many many years in fact the apartment I lived in was like say it was there and the car park to the shopping centre was there so I overlooked the car park and the shopping centre was right there um, and I didn't have a car cause, so I was kind of stuck there a lot of the time and I used to go in um, and have a cup of coffee in the central plaza of the shopping centre which I found very depressing but I realised when I sat there that it was just so so fascinating just the amount of human life, human activity there was um, a little seating area that I had never noticed um, sort of off to one corner of the central plaza area and it's where all the older people of the community used to come and just hang out and um, I realised week on week on week as I'd go back I, I felt like I got to know these characters they'd be turning up and high-fiving each other and practically hugging each other it was a real like little community thing they had going on there so don't underestimate places that would typically turn you off or that seem you know, the very antithesis of art or inspiration because they can actually be really fertile ground for, for interesting stuff. Um, and then um, another sort of obvious and great one is coffee shops. I really miss coffee shops at the moment. Um, they're just great petri dishes of life, whether it's a Starbucks or a little local coffee shop, whatever it is, you just, you just get to witness a lot of human life there. And again, um, you can sort of blend into the background and nobody really notices that you're there spying on them really. Um, so yeah, there's some ideas for places to sketch outside the home. Here are the tools you need to get started. Number one, all five of your senses. You need to keep these as alert and as sharp as possible. So no headphones and no mobiles. Two, a notepad and a pencil. These don't have to be fancy, just use whatever you have to hand. Three, patience. This might be the hardest one of all. You'll need to get comfortable with unplugging and just sitting, waiting and watching. So for this exercise, we are going to assume that we all have access to a park or a park-like place. If, if you don't live anywhere near a park, um, I would say another good one would be, um, you know, if there's a little forest trail or, um, yeah, forest trail or some sort of like scenic, area of scenic beauty um, that you would tend to get people going to say at the weekends or that, um, kind of go there and just see who you, who you see along the way, really. So you're in the park, you've got your notebook and your pen, you're unplugged and you're sitting, you're waiting and you're watching. Here's some questions to keep in mind as you look around you, keeping all your senses open. What are you sitting on? Is it a bench? Is it the grass? How does it feel? Is it soft and damp beneath your fingers? Is it sharp and pointy, dried out from too much sun? What can you smell? Is it wood being burned in the small houses nearby? Is it petrol fumes from a busy road? What do you hear? Is it birds chirping? Children laughing in the playground? What's the weather like today? Is the sun struggling through thick layers of white cloud? Is it hot and humid? Is it chilly? Is it a big park or a small one? Is it full of flowers? Or is it a blank square of grass with some trees around the edge? Do you like this park? Does it make you happy? Or do you find it a bit depressing? What about the people? Are there any in particular that catch your attention? Why? What are they doing? Describe them. What do they look like? What are they wearing? Roughly what age do they look? Why is it that they interest you? 
Maybe it's the expression on their face as they walk their dog. Maybe you've overheard part of a conversation between two people. What did you hear? Maybe it's an overheard phone call. Maybe it's the way a father is interacting with his little boy. Maybe it's the way an older woman is wearing bright red lipstick and playing Rihanna on a little radio she has somewhere in her jacket. Are there any animals around? These can be people's pets. It can be wild birds, it could be a swan, a duck. All these count as characters and their behaviour can be as interesting to watch as human behaviour. Write quickly and copiously. Don't worry about grammar or spelling or if what you're writing sounds good. Just get it all down, anything that pops into your head. Record as much as you can. You want to give yourself as many ingredients as possible for telling your story. And sometimes it's only afterwards when you read over your notes that you realise there's something really interesting there. So now you've got all these intriguing details. How can you put them together in such a way that they're entertaining to read? Here are some thoughts to keep in mind as you read through your notes. Striking characters. As I've mentioned before, I find it best to focus on a couple of main characters to star, as it were, in your story. It can get confusing and lose dramatic impact if you put too many people in. So, referring back to the questions you were asking yourself as you were looking around in the park, were there particular characters that stood out for you at the time? And as you read over your notes, are there one or two that really pop out for you now? What is it in your description of them that's striking? Is it the way that they're dressed? Is it an energy that they're giving off? Maybe they're sad, happy, nervous, excited? Was it something they said or the way that they said it? Maybe they said or did something that doesn't fully make sense, but for some reason intrigues you. That's okay. You don't need to know the answers or be able to explain any of this. Just tell us about it if you think it's interesting. Mood. This is where all your environmental details come in, like the sights, the sounds and smells. You can use these to build an evocative atmosphere, whether it's bleak and dreary or upbeat and sunny. Language. Think about how you use language to express what you're seeing and feeling in a particular moment. Avoid cliches. Instead of it being a sunny day, maybe the sun feels like a warm blanket against your skin. Or, if you want to convey a harsher mood, you could say the sun is burrowing into your eyeballs like needles. Play around with what language can do and be precise. Story structure. So, as mentioned already, See this as a compact snapshot in time. It doesn't need to have a classic beginning, middle and an end. Your goal here is to capture a moment so sharply and so vividly that the reader feels like they were there themselves. You don't need to worry about tying up all the loose ends and having a neat conclusion. After all, you're only briefly glimpsing these people, but that doesn't matter. A story is often more powerful when you leave room for the reader to imagine what a character's motivations might have been and what happened next. So thank you everyone for joining me. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Feel free to get in touch either in the comments below or find me on Instagram and you can send me a message. Um, but Best of luck and I hope you have a bit of fun with it.